is a beautiful day here in Toronto today. It does not feel like winter at all. Um, so what better excuse to go ride for a bit. So a bit of an interesting thing or I guess realization happened the other day and I'm slightly surprised that more video or tech people aren't talking about it and no I'm not going back on my word about smartphone filmmaking I'm still not really a fan but you know how smartphones have like a way smaller sensor than DSLRs like the one I'm using right now smartphone sensors are somewhere like seven millimeters to five millimeters like they're like they're tiny whereas a full frame sensor is 36 millimeters by 20 four millimeters at least that's what I, I looked up online I hope those figures are right anyways it's a massive difference and the bigger the sensor the better the image is gonna be especially for dynamic range there's gonna be a lot more dynamic range for a bigger sensor which is a massive plus it's actually one of the biggest things for having a nice image in filmmaking but then my friend Vinny sent me a message on Facebook and he's like why is my smartphone taking a better picture than my DSLR sometimes Times. And the, the photo that he sent me was kind of a high contrast situation. There was a bright sky and then darker trees. And um, the DSLR was blowing out the sky or then it would have really dark trees. Whereas the smartphone was able to capture both at the same time. So it looked like the smartphone had way more dynamic range um, than the DSLR. So what's going on here? Well, the answer is HDR. Now HDR is not really a new thing, it's used in photography all the time, basically just using different exposures, putting them together and using software to increase the dynamic range of your photo. But in video it's a lot less used until the iPhone XS came out. Now I could be wrong, maybe all smartphones are doing this nowadays, but future Maddie here, uh, a Upon further research, it appears that there are other smartphones with HDR video recording also. It is a brand new thing in 2018, I believe it was implemented. Um, and also I don't know how much the other companies are using it. Is Apple using it more aggressively? Not sure, but mystery solved iPhone XS had the whole beauty gate thing. It looked like they were putting on some sort of like beauty filter to smooth out skin and that kind of stuff. Now that kind of died off really quickly and I never really found out what that was. But what I think it is, is that they implemented HDR video or at least in a more aggressive way than they had before. And this is why sometimes your iPhone will actually look better than your DSLR because there's more dynamic range. It's actually absurd how much dynamic range there is for such a small sensor that's in the phone. Good example right now, this is a really harsh situation. There's, there's this sun here, it's really bright, really hard for this DSLR, even in a log profile, which is quite a bit of dynamic range to handle this. Then with my iPhone, I pull it out. It looks kind of the same at first when you first switch it on, but then as soon as I tap the background, all of a sudden the whole sky is perfectly exposed and so is my face. And even this super bright part, still a lot of exposure going on there. So what the heck is happening? What is going on? And so it's really interesting how with software, they're able to get that much more dynamic range. And in some cases, it ends up looking better than a DSLR that has a way bigger sensor. And how I know there's definitely some HDR video going on is, is if I just click on my face and I try to turn down the exposure, bring down the exposure, my face darkens up a lot. The background is, is exposed now, but my face is really dark also. But if I just click on that background a little bit, now my face is exposed and the background is exposed at the same time. My face is no longer really, really dark. So they're definitely, definitely doing some HDR. And I think that's why sometimes the face ends up looking all plasticky and kind of gross fake. Like in this case, it just doesn't really look natural. This frame, there's a lot of dynamic range, but it doesn't look natural. It's like too much dynamic range. It's too HDR. We've all seen those photos where it's just way too much HDR and uh, yeah, it doesn't look good. Future Matty here again. Um, one of the things that I don't like about HDR video is that it kind of looks unedited. It feels like it needs a little bit more contrast a lot of times, especially with things like the skin tones and, and the shadows. If you're wearing like a black shirt, for example, a lot of times it comes out kind of 
gray or even silver and that's definitely not true to life you want that black shirt to look black so it almost feels like you need to edit the video clips which isn't something that I want to do uh, uh, when I film on, on my phone I want it to be quick and fast I want the look to be baked in I want to film myself and be able to post it onto Instagram stories or wherever right away without having to like tweak the colors and all that stuff so that's a bit of a downside for me uh, with HDR video Maybe they are denoising the skin tones, the mid-tones a lot, and that's what the whole beauty gate thing was about. But really, I think it's the whole dynamic range and HDR video. And I haven't really heard anybody talking about this, so I could totally be wrong here, but I think I'm onto something. Then on top of that, the whole, you know, background fake bokeh, um, Instagram can actually do it even in video, which is really interesting. Um, there's just a lot they're doing in software because the hardware is limited, they're doing with software to make the image look a lot better, like a lot better. But even with all this new software that they're using inside the phone, is the quality gonna be as good as a DSLR? No, there's still a lot of limitations because of the smaller sensor size. For example, um, the bokeh, it's never gonna be as nice or as organic looking as with a DSLR. Using a wide open aperture with a big sensor, um, you're just gonna get really nice background blur. And also the smartphone doesn't always know what's supposed to be in focus and what's not, it's kind of just guessing. Low light performance is gonna be way better with a big sensor, that's just how it is. Again, they could fix some of it with, um, you know, denoising and all of that stuff. But yeah, the bigger sensor is always gonna be better in low light. And then that also means overall just less noise. Again, bigger sensor sensor means less noise. And then lastly, probably the hardest thing to overcome is the crop factor. You can never get really nice big wide shots because the crop factor is just so much on these tiny little sensors compared to the full frame. So no, smartphones are still not as good quality as DSLRs with bigger sensors. It's just the limitations of the hardware. Always out of breath carrying the one wheel up the stairs. So it really was kind of a realization for me that something like this, a small little smartphone through some little software upgrades, perks, um, could potentially someday be as good as something like a DSLR or mirrorless camera. A little bit of fake bokeh, bokeh, whatever it is, uh, noise reduction, better low light performance, higher dynamic range with HDR stabilization and yeah you got this little gimbal of a camera with crazy dynamic range all of a sudden uh future maddie one, one more time uh i'm surprised actually mirrorless and dslr cameras haven't implemented more kind of like software upgrades or enhancements like HDR video yet. Um, maybe maybe it's a downside of having massive sensors. Maybe it's really hard and there's a lot of ghosting and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I remember actually Magic Lantern, which is like kind of like hacking your Canon cameras. Um, it could like enable this thing where it would like flash different ISOs so you would get different um, exposures for video and then you could kind of combine them or something. I, Memory's a little hazy, but essentially you could kind of get like an HDR video, but it had some ghosting. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see when other companies, actual camera manufacturers um, will start using stuff like HDR video. And thinking back to the first phones with cameras, the quality was like absolute garbage, especially compared to what you get now. And, and I guess that's the thing with technology is that there's things that you think will never ever happen. You'll be like, nope. Then five years goes by and you're like, ah, maybe, but I'm, I'm, it could happen. And then another five years you're like, why hasn't it already happened? Or it's already happened and you're like, it's so obvious. Of course smartphones are gonna be the filmmaking tool for everybody in the future. Right now that seems absurd still, but who knows, might happen. I don't know, I just really like tech and the things that new technologies allow us to do. Oh, and no, I still, do not really enjoy using a smartphone for filmmaking. I just don't.